Recording. Nice. Mm -hmm. So we left off with saying that the tree was not square shaped, but instead the small house was square shaped. Um, I do think we read a little bit after this, but then my computer like shut down so it wasn't recorded. Yeah. So this is about where we left off. Um, I'm going to skip that and start here. What is a Shinzo? Shinzo is your heart. Exactly. Your physical heart. And what is this word over here? Tatanaru. Uh, is it your, what's it called? Vascular system. So all the blood vessels and whatnot. Good guess. Takanaru. It says uh, ta over there. Whoops. I never changed that. Takanaru with a ka is actually um, like throbbing, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah. Kind of like pumping. The, yeah, thumping, exactly. Have to exit out of here real fast. This did not select for some reason. Okay. Now it's working. Uh hi, takanaru, which is to throb. Um view slideshow. So takanaru turns into um the mass form is takanarimas. So what do you think the te form is? Uh, it's not tatemari. No, that's not right. Um, so it's takana. And how does te get added to it? Taka mashite or mashita. Oh, takanashita is your guess? So, oh, it's te form, so. Te form. Takamashite. That'd be takanashite, which is an interesting guess. So that would be if this was takanasu, but this is actually takanaru. It ends with a do. So we know it's not a do verb, because that would be takanamas. But instead it's takanarimas, which makes it officially called an u verb. So, there's complicated form. So this would actually become takanate. So it's te with a uh, glottal stop before it. Takanate. Hi. Takanate. Te form is hard. Okay, so now that you know that, let's read this sentence. Three house da. Uh... ジャックの心臓がドキドキ高鳴って、or So ta form, in case you forgot, is just past tense. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh so treehouse, full stop, kind of. Jack's heart was excitedly beating. Exactly. Perfect. Beautiful. It's a treehouse. Treehouse da. Um, how about the next little phrase? Are wa zettai sekai de sekai de ichibon ichibon no ichibon. Ah, takai tree house yo to ani. So do you know what zettai means? Uh, definitely. Exactly. How about sekai? The world. And how about ichiban? Uh, the first, like first place. Yes. So I feel like you'll know what this is. That is definitely the first. Okay, I should continue reading. The Kai Tsuri House. So that's the tallest or yeah, tallest mm. tree house in the world. Perfect. Said Annie. Beautiful. And next is this sentence. Ah, konna tokoro ni tree house ga atta or tree house ga atta nante shiranaku shiranakatta na shirakanatta shiranakatta. Uh, That's hard to say. 
Yeah. Do you know what um shiru, the verb that's being used here, normally means? Shiru is white, but I don't think no, that's shiro. Shiru, you're right. Shiro be white. Oh, not related to that at all. Shiru. Shiru. Oh, so like I know. Exactly. So now we have um shira nai, which I don't know. Which exactly. Shiranai, I don't know. So shiranakatta has ta at the end of it, telling us what? I didn't know. Exactly. Perfect. So what did he not know? Konna tokoro ni so such that or koro ni tokoro, so place. So such place, which is the tree house, atta nante. I didn't know the treehouse was there. Exactly. That's exactly what it says. Nante is just kind of stressing this more, adding more flavor to this. So something like the treehouse. And konna is being used to modify tokoro. So you're right, tokoro means place. And konna means, oh, at this place, like such a place as this. So it's just very like making this more dramatic is what konna and nante are both doing. So you could have just says, oh, Koko, koko ni ga atta shirenakatta. Which I didn't know there's a treehouse here, but they wanted to make it more. Nante, konna tokoro. They just wanted to add flavor to it. Hi. How about the next line then? Uh, Jack wa koya. Koya o jito or jito. Mia getama mama. Tamama. Yep, uh, ageta and then mama. Ah, then, ageta, uh, mama. So then we have mama. <laughs> Mageta, mama. Tsufiata. Tsubiata. Tsubiata. Yeah. So Tsubiata. mama is basically a almost like time phrase. So it basically means while doing the action before, like there's... The, uh, the verb mentioned before this is not being stopped. <laughs> it's basically what it means. <laughs> like, if you want to, like, to get, like, grammat like, technical, kind of. Not being stopped. All yeah. right. So, uh, you can kind of think about it as a wow, but it, like, it has, like, a little different, like, flavor to it. So, it could be, um, jito miyage nagara tsubuyaita would be basically the same thing. Do you know what tsubuyaita means? Tsubuyaita. I do not. Makes sense. It means to mutter something. So he mutters. To mutter. Which kind of shows that he's just kind of talking to himself. He's saying this under his breath. He's not doing any like, whoa. I have no idea. So he's like, whoa. So he's almost thinking this. He's muttering it. So while muttering this, what is Jack doing? Miyageta. He miyageta. Uh, it sounds familiar. Kanji looks familiar. Does uh, the first kanji is like miru? Do you know that word? To see. Exactly. And ageru um, has lots of meaning. That's sagaru. Sagaru. Sagaru is under. Oh. But um, as you see, the kanji is a little different. So if it's not under, what is that? On top. Exactly. So this, so mi ageta uh, is past tense of looking up. So looked up. Mi ageta. Looked up. And what did he look at? He looked at koya. Yes. And who's looking at the koya? Jack. And in what way did he look at it? Chito. Yeah. Uh, what did this kind of just means like you're kind of staring without like blinking almost. Like you're maintaining like a very fixed eye contact. You're kind of going G. Just staring at it. Yeah. It just means maintaining eye contact. Just staring at it. Hi. Uh, so then we hit a picture of the book. Uh, you don't have to read this because I have had them in the next couple of slides because it's too, too tiny. But look at the pretty picture. We see this treehouse is humongous, this little thingy. 
And a little spoiler alert that at some point she's going to climb up there because she's up here and ducks down there. Okay, so that all. Do you know what um, that all plus like a, a question word in the sentence tends to mean? Uh, that all with a question. I've never heard it with a question. Uh, it just means it's like a question like in the sentence. Oh, okay. Yeah, now I remember it's from anime. Just recalled yeah. it now. Yeah. <laughs> So over here, for example, we have nan daro. Nan is the question word and daro is the next part. So it tends to mean like you're wondering something, but you're really only speculating to yourself. Sometimes you can just use daro and it's just like, just as I wonder, but this really has a like uh, questioning yourself. So like I have an example. Can you do me a favor and read the first line? Uh, ichiban tsu or ichiban tsu. You accidentally skipped these guys right here, which is Kina. So, Ichiban Kina Dobutsu wa Nani, which is, what is your favorite animal? And can you do me a favor and read the next line? This is a different person talking. Nandaro, Nako Kai, or Nako Kai Mi. Oh, sorry. Nandaro, Nako ka Inu. So he's thinking like, what is oh, the nickel. So he's not really talking to A and being like, oh, I wonder what animal do I like? He's thinking to himself, hmm, what do I like? Is it dogs, cats? None at all. So none is the question word in this case. Just being what? I wonder what? And it's very much used for when you're thinking to yourself, not when you're wondering like out loud and someone else can like respond to you, if that makes sense. Because sometimes you'd be like, oh, I wonder where Jack is. And you're like, oh, I know where Jack is. And you're like, oh, cool. Like sometimes you can like use that all to like have someone fill in something for you perhaps. Or to be like something probably happens. But over here it's very to yourself when there's a question word in it. So using this, how would you think, where is Jack, I wonder? <laughs> How would you say that in Japanese? Jack wa doko nan daro. Exactly. Doko nan daro. I uh, can't type that fast. <laughs> Perfect. Um, now going off of this. Um, so we have learned that no this in the past can be used for a discovery of a new concept of something. Like, for example, can you do me a favor and read this phrase from a while ago in our book? Ah, yokri. Oh, no, that's a different word. Ah, yokri o ryukyu. Oh, that's not right. Yokri o yokri o to iu e or iu kyoryu me o kyoryu ga atanda. 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 It would have been um, kono jidai, would have been the part that I dropped from this. Kono jidai, which would be during that era, or sono jidai might, might be it, sono jidai. Yoko ryu toyu kyoryu ga atanda, atanda. Do you remember what a kyoryu was? A kyoryu, it's, okay, I think it was either something big, like a big monster or a dinosaur. So it's uh, one of the two. Kyoryu is a dinosaur. Um, Kaibutsu was the big monster. Very similar though. I am sure later in the books, Kaibutsu will be used to describe certain Kyoryu will hit, I assume. So what dinosaur is a Yokoryu? Do you remember? It is a flying dinosaur. Exactly. Pterodactyl, is it? Yes. So do you remember, just out of curiosity, what Toyu is doing here? Toyu. So it's like, well, it's not and. It's so not. it's mm. my hint is you can have this kanji sometimes, which has kuchi in it, such as yobu. You. Mm -mm. Mm. So it has like a this dinosaur has a pterodactyl kind of mouth. Good guess. 
Um, so you means to say, kuchi is just a square. So that, that might have been what confused you. So a lot of times, um, if a word has to do with like words in Japanese, then mouth will show up inside of it. So you means to say, yobu means to call out, uh, yomu means to read, and they all kind of have kuchi inside of it, which is which means mouth. Because you need mouths in order to create language originally, is like the idea of it when the kanji was made. Um, so iu means to say. So to, which is like the quotation to, and iu is means to say. So this could kind of be, so when you're like breaking it down, it can be like yoko ryu is like in quotation marks. So this is basically saying the dinosaur that is, that is called yoko ryu. We're not using yobu, but we're using iu to have that. When you say it, what it is, we use you. So um, a lot of times I say the name of the dinosaur was the flying dinosaur. So it's used for um, just doing names. Toyu, yoko ryu, toyu, kyo ryu. For example, I have a pet dog named Buki. I would say this as Buki to you inu. I'd be a dog that is called Buki. I see. How would you say the human called um, sin? <laughs> so, sin to you ningen. Perfect. That's exactly how it works. So this right here has nda to be used as like a discovering a new concept. So before this, he didn't know there was a flying dinosaur by the name of flying dinosaur. He, he had no idea, but he has discovered it. He went, wow, did you know that there's a dinosaur called flying dinosaur? Cool. So that's what nda is being used to mean. Um, so no this is the polite form, but a lot of times in this book, we're using more short forms for things. So nda is what uh, is used. So knowing that, how would somebody say, whose treehouse is it, I wonder? Because he wants to discover this fact in the future. Mm -mm -mm. So we have dare mo, dare, dare ka, and three houses. And that all. That all. So that all. First, first off, um, which dare do you think we know we need for this? It's not dare ka at somebody that is uh, who and dare mo should be it. I'm guessing. Sadly, dare mo, I did this as a trick. Dare mo is actually nobody and dare ka is somebody. So you actually just need dare. And it goes dare no is how we, um, dare no would be who's, because. Who's, all oh, right, possessive. Exactly, would be dare no. So yeah, I did that to trick you. <laughs> <laughs> so it starts with dare no. So how would we make whose tree house is it, I wonder? So, dare no tree house daro. Yes. Uh, you actually, you're missing one thing. Do you remember what you're missing? Oh, I need the unda. Yes. Dare no tree house unda daro. Yes, it goes un, un daro. Because daro. daro is basically a way to end sentences, and it has a da already there. So you can kind of think about it as this so here is actually da plus ro is probably what the grammar actually is. So adding ro makes it into I wonder. <laughs> so um, I wonder whose treehouse it is. So just adding the n. Dare no treehouse n daro. Whose treehouse? Okay. Can you do me a favor and read this sentence? Hi. Uh, dare no tree house na, nan daro. Oh, so that's basically what we just said. Exactly. Whose tree's house is this? I wonder. So the thing that I forgot to mention is easy to make these little mistakes. Uh, is that with nouns and non adjectives when you're doing no or nda form? Because over here we have a verb, but over here there's no verb. So because of that, you need to add a na in for the, the nda. So that's why it becomes dare no treehouse na nandaro. So that, that's where that na came from. So that's not a um, nani na. 
this is a na being connected to tri house because tri house is a noun. We want it to be a verb. Yes. Um, it's not really verbifying it or anything like that. It just has to do with how conjugation works. So if it was a verb like atta, we don't need to add anything to it. It is good as it is. But if it is a um, noun or a na adjective, then we need to add na. And I think if it's an e adjective, we have to keep the e. So I think, but I don't want to Google that. <laughs> um, so now we're at te form. So we're doing um, te form can be used to make the meaning of to try something out for the first time. Um, and the way you do that is that you get te form and then you add mitai to the end of it. That means to want to try something. So can you do me a favor and read this word right here? Noboru. 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 What do you think that means? Uh, I remember doing this word once, which I remember. Noboru. Noboru. Is it like, oh, well, now I can see it, <laughs> climbing. <laughs> yep, noboru is climbing or to climb. So noboru turns into noborimasu. Do you remember hearing a D before? So how do you think te form is made? Uh, no, bo but something happens to the do to make te form. No, bo dimas. I think you did it, but uh, you said temas. Which doesn't really sound right. You don't need the mas there. Um, we're just doing te form. So I'd be like te mas would make actually make this into um imas form, which would be doing actually climbing, but adding imas in order to make it more polite. But I was just looking for te form, which would be no no botte mas. Uh, no botte. <laughs> I want to say too, because because this is a word. This is a Japanese word right here. No botte mas. It is climbing. Well, nobotte on its own doesn't fully have a meaning. It needs something else added to it. For example, right here, we're supposed to get nobotte mitai. What do you think nobotte mitai means? Uh, to watch climbing. Good idea. So, miru can mean to watch something. However, Mitai is a special phrase that kind of comes from like, I don't know, metaphorically of seeing something, of wanting to see something. Um, and it means to try. Mitai. Mitai, mitai. So nobote mitai means I want to try climbing something. Nobote mitai. So knowing that, how would you say in Japanese, I want to try climbing this rope ladder? And now uh... is rope ladder. In case you forgot. Nobashiko wa noboru te mitai. I'm going right now. Shiko wa nobote mitai. So this is super duper close. However, this would mean the rope ladder wants to climb. Seems oh. a little weird, doesn't it? What particle do you think this actually needs? Oh, give me a second. I think my headset unplugged. Oh, good. Uh, so what I think you missed 
is that uh, means the rope ladder wants to try climbing. A little strange, but how would we, what particle does this actually mean? Oh, it's ga, not wa. So ga is another good guess. Um, that makes it that naobashigo is the most important thing of the sentence. But, um, and it could, depending on the context, kind of insinuate that perhaps the thing you want to climb is a naoboshigo. But in general, due to what kind of verb this is, what we want as actually is to label it as the direct object, which would actually get o. Nawabashigo o nobotte mitai means I want to climb the Nawabashigo. But that wasn't super important now. So, what is actually written in the book? Ah, why? Ne. Oh, it's ne. Naruto. Ne nobotte mitai. How the happen? Should be nobotte mitai. Maybe it says nobotte minai. I think um, when I I had to type this part up, it should be nobotte mitai. Nobotte mitai. Hi. I had to type this up because this was in the picture. <laughs> they had to look at the picture and like type it up. So a little mistake. Whoops. Thought I checked that. Nobotte mitai. What does this mean? Ne nobotte mitai. Uh, so like, hey, or like, hey, did you climb the rope ladder? Good idea. Um, depending on the context, that could be what this means. He has dropped the, the, um, the author has dropped off. Well, theoretically, Annie has dropped off the subject and things like that. And any kind of front time phrase. So theory like, oh, did you try climbing this? Uh, you'd probably use like nobote uh, mitagatta or something like did you try like past tense somehow but in here with the question mark it actually means do you want to try climbing it hey do you want to try climbing this or like hey let's go like climb this basically it makes it more like a invitation almost um before we go to the next part now in the past we learned no this or nda to have the meaning of discovering a new concept. It has lots of meanings. Another meaning it can have is to be used to be an explanation for something. Not totally like because, but just like a general explanation. Um, the one Pacific uh, grammar source I looked at sorted them into uh, four different categories. I felt like this was the same thing in my head but I thought I'd keep them in the different categories in case they're different in your head, like they were for this grammar source. So for example, gakko wa ikenai, or ikimasen, which means I cannot, I will not go to school or can't go to school. And then it goes, um, kaze, kaze nan desu, which would be, I have a cold. So you see the reason why he cannot go to school is because he has a cold. So he could say these two sentences to someone like, oh, what are you going to do today? Oh, gakko wa ikenai yo, kaze nan da. You know, I can't go to school, I have a cold. So it kind of, the nan da part is insinuating that this is the reason why he can't go to school. Can you do me a favor and read uh, the next part? It's a little small. Uh, sushi wa ninki, ninki, nan da. Uh, so you see right here, the reason why sushi is expensive is because it's popular. But instead he says, uh, sushi is really popular, you know, because it's because it's um, expensive. So over here, you, they used it to switch places. So that's how it's different than um, because, you know. It's different than that because what comes first doesn't really matter with nda as long as either one could be the explanation. But the reason why something is expensive is because it's popular. It wouldn't if it wasn't popular, there'd be no reason to make it expensive. You know? Yeah. So right over here is um 
ダンは日本人じゃない。アメリカ人なんだ。So, Dan is not Japanese. He's American. Which also can be the reason why he's not Japanese is because he's American. Like, but they called it rewording. p u m a k e r i remark. Reason. There's also interpretation,、um, which would be karai, karai, karai n d a Karai n d a ne, which is it's spicy, isn't it?、Uh, which you could say if someone, as in this little description down here, I can't see, if like, I don't know, tears in their eyes. Face red. Oh, karai, karai desu、ね、oh, it's spicy, isn't it? But basically, the reason why their face is red is because it's spicy. So basically, if you're, if you're looking at something, you're like, oh, that's why that's happening, you can use nda or, n, or nan des to,、um, or no des to describe that kind of meaning. So, knowing that, since this right here is the explanation, the reason why you can't go in is because it's somebody's treehouse. So, I want you to say it's somebody's treehouse and end it with the nda form for explaining something. Because Annie, if you remember, said, Oh, can I go climb the treehouse? Want to climb it? So, here is going to be Jack's response to that it's someone's treehouse. What is someone in Japanese? Dareka. Yes. So, how would you say? So, do, do, do. Dareka no tree house n d a Perfect. Oh, wait. I think maybe you missed off one part. Tsuri house n d a Did you. What goes right over here between these two points? Uh, what? It actually gets a na here because tsuri house is a noun.、Mm. What if it was a verb over there? Then I wouldn't do anything? Yes, exactly. Perfect. Dare no tsuri house is a n It's someone's tree house. Thus, you can't go in. Is insituated. So,、um, can you do me a favor and read this for me? ダメだよ。誰のもの、誰ものだか、わからないんだろ、or わからないんだから。Yes. So, 誰のもの。What do you think that means? 誰のもの。もの sounds familiar, so like,、mm. うん、that is. Do you remember the word 食べ物 Or、uh, no mi, no mi, mono. This would just be if you saw it from your Anki deck that you made. Mono. Mono.、Um, uh, thing? Yes. Mono means thing. So, dare no mono means something that belongs to somebody else.、Um, this da is just the da like ending a sentence. So, dare no mono ka. Which is、um, embedding someone's thing. Yes. I guess. Somebody's thing? Wakaranai. Wakaranai. What does that mean? I don't understand. Or it's like, I don't know. It means I don't understand or I don't know. In this case, I don't know. So, what does he not know? So someone's thing. Yes. So, we do not know who, who, who this belongs to. Um, whose thing this is? Wakaranai. Then we have n d a k a r a So this n d a what is it doing in this sentence? n d a So, hmm. Tare m o n a d a k a Someone's thing, I don't know. The n d a So it's like answering someone's question, kind of. It's kind of. Kind of, kind of. It, it's an explanation for something. So, in the context of, well, he said, dame da yo. What does that mean? It's like, don't, dame. Dame. So, this is an explanation for dame. Why is it dame? Well, dare no mono ka. 
わからない。We do not know who sing this, who this belong, what, who sing this is, who, who, who does the tree, who sing, tree yeah. Um, and then cut up actually has the meaning of because. So that's how it's a little different from because. You kind of just add it in sentences in Japanese when it's an explanation, but it's not like saying the word because out loud. It might be more like, yeah, no, almost because, you know, it's, we don't know who it belongs to. Might be like a way、mm. to think about it.、Uh, except we don't really say, you know, a lot in English, but it kind of just, it's some kind of almost like a filler word that you just kind of have to put in your sentences when you're doing an explanation for something. And well, dada, dakara, the kara part is really saying the word because out loud. So one's more contextual, I guess, context because and actual because. So that's bad because it belongs to, because we don't know who this belongs to.、Um, so now we're looking at hajimeru. And what happens is that you get the stem of a verb and you add it to hajimeru. And that means to start something, to start. The verb. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence right over here? Asago. Oh, yeah. Asago. Asago han o. Dabe. Dabe. Hajimeta. Yes. What does that mean? So he started to eat breakfast. Exactly. Perfect. So over here, I have noboru. What does that mean? Do you remember? Noboru. To climb. Exactly. And the mas form of this verb is noborimas. So, what is the stem? The stem would be nobu. nobu.、So、it actually be nobori. The stem is、nobori. what happens when you take off mas from a verb. So, tabe is because、um, it is tabe mas. So, you just delete mas and we're left with tabe, while noboru actually becomes no,、uh, noborimas. So, we have when we, so after we delete the mas, oh, or re is still there. So, body, hi, keeps 30. So, knowing that, how would you say Jack starts climbing? Um, Jack starts climbing. Jack wa nobori masu hajimete or hajimeru. Hmm, so you made a little mistake. Do you know what? Oh my god, I get that. Oh, right. I'm not、what、supposed is, to put mus. Yes, mus is supposed、plus. to be deleted. So,、hey. what does it turn into? Uh, Jack wa nobori wa nobori wa hajimete. Sorry, hajimeru. So, there's only, yes, <laughs> there's only one wa, which goes to Jack wa. So, Jack wa nobori hajimeru. Jack wa nobori hajimeru. Jack begins to climb.、Um, so we're not reading this yet. And we're going over here.、Uh, do you know what happens when we have、um, te form with right before another verb? What does this mean? I do eat te, and I stay there. So, I do eat te, and I stay there. He wanted to talk about a hand. Or a fist.、Um. Ignore this for now. That has no context right now.、Um, Arite means to walk and hanasu means to speak. Well, to have a conversation. Arite. Aru, aruku. Aruku.、Hai. To walk and hanasu is to speak.、Um, to speak. So, so it's like while? Yes. Exactly, it is while. So, while walking, they're speaking. So, it's very similar to nagara, except nagara is used for two different sentences. This is just connecting two verbs real fast. So, aruite hanashiteru, talking while walking, or walking while talking.、Um, the other one right here is this verb. Can you read it for me? Tsukamu. So, what do you think it means based off of that、uh, nice little gif? To... To like kind of fist your hand? Close. It means to grab onto something.、Mm. So、I just thought that was a very grabby looking hand.、Um, what do you think the te form of this is?、Uh, ka. Tsukamashite, I think. Mashite. Interesting. Tsukate. So 
it's a good guess for getting a te at the end of something for te form. But do you remember what yomu means to read? What is the te form of yomu? Do you remember? That's one you've done before. Uh, I keep thinking with shite. So yomu ma shite. But <laughs> it's actually yonde. So yonde. Like yonderu. Uh, it was nan no hon yonderu. It's something that Annie said. What home book are you reading? Yonderu. So yonde is the te form of yomu, which ends with a mu. So what do you think mm. samu becomes? Tsukatte. Or tsumatte. Becomes a... Uh, uh, Skamu becomes tsukande. 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 So mu gets nde. Mu? Nde. Comes nde. Hai. Utsununde, I think, is the way the song goes. So I guess U ends it nde, maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Nde, yonde, So now that you have that, can you do me a favor and read this for me? Mi o, mi o karashite yoku miru. So this kanji, this word right here is me. So me o. So, do you know what yoku means? Yoku sounds very familiar. Um, yoku. So, it's like sentence one, then sentence two. Uh, interesting guess. Uh, so, yoku actually has the same meaning of e. It is actually the exact same word. But it conjugates into yoku sometimes uh, from a way it used to be pronounced. It used to be like yoi. So yoi. you can think of like the te form of e, which means good, is yoku <laughs> for some reason. So yoku means like good or well. So taking a good miru. What does miru mean? Uh, to see. Yes. So taking a good, what would be the verb of seeing? I guess to see. So mite. Uh, uh, taking a good luck is how we say in English. So I guess we have look and to see and it's separated for some reason. So yoku miru is taking a good look. And what did they do at the same time of taking a good look? Me o koraste. Me o koraste. So their eyes were squinting. Exactly. Perfect. Then we have a toe right here. Which toe do you think this is? Um, it's either the sentence to. Or yes, it is another the sentence It is the sentence though. So this happens, and then this can happen. So they can kind of happen at the at the same time, but the first event needs to be occurring, or to have occurred in order for the second event to happen, is what to does. It has an almost cause and effect kind of meaning. Wait. Oh, this right here was a a refresher. <laughs> Because <laughs> a while ago we had um uh soko niwa tisakte shikakui no koyaga makatekita, which was um there was a small squarish house on a tree. So when you squint in your eyes, you could see. Um so now we're at our actual sentence. Can you do me a favor and read this? Uh chotto miru dake ani wa nawabashi go o tsukande nobody. Hajimeta. 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 So first off, Choto Miru Dake. Choto Miru Dake. So like wait and see or wait look. Oh. So Miru doesn't mean well uh Miru does mean see. So Choto. So you were thinking about Choto like wait. So sometimes in some contexts it can kind of have that meaning, but Choto just means a little. That's that's the only like direct meaning it has. So when so someone might say "totto matte kudasai," would mean please wait. Wait a little. Matte yeah. has the meaning of waiting, or "chotto" might mean like oh that's a little too hard to do, or that's a little inconvenient. So all it means is a little, but sometimes the verb will be dropped. Over here, the verb's here, and the verb is "miru." So "chotto miru dake" means to take a little look. You know what "dake" means? Uh, dake. Is it just like 
something you throw in there. Kind of. It means, well, not, not really. <laughs> that game means like only. So you're saying, oh, I'm just going to take a little look and that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to look. I'm not going to touch anything. I'm just going to look. Is basically what the duck mm. is. Miru so she's saying, I'm not going to mess anything out. If if the owner's in there, it's going to be fine. I'm just taking a peek, you know? Mm. I'll take a little peek. So I guess in this case, it's like saying just in the sentence. Just a little peek. Because choto is a little and miru is the peeking. Then we have nawabashi go o tsukande. What does that mean? So the rope ladder was tsukande. Oh, what was tsukande? Hmm. Skande. What could that be? Hmm. Uh, skande. Skande. Something people tend to do with their hands. Hmm. Grab? Yes. No basigo. Skande means to grab the rope ladder. And then what does she do after she grabs the rope ladder? Nobody wa ha, oh sorry. Nobody Noboru, nobody hajimete hajimeta hajimeta nobody hajimeta. So she started climbing it exactly after she grabbed it. Perfect. So Annie goes, Oh, I'm just gonna take a little peek. And then she grabs the rope ladder and begins her climb. And then it's past tense because she's already climbed up. <laughs> she started, but she finished it already. Um over here is just another refresher page. Um, Oni-chan, chotto kite. So what does te form without anything after it? What does it mean if you just have te form? Kite. Uh, kite, kite. Oni-chan. So, so it's like listen. Well, here it says listen. Um, so that's kite. Kite is listen. This is kite. It's short. Kite. Kite. Kite, kite, kite. But this is ki in the long key is listen or to ask. This is kite, like kuru. You know what kuru means? Uh, another word that sounds really familiar. Super familiar. We use it a lot with compounding words, such as to be um, oi kakete kuru. I think was one of the words which meant something is chasing us or coming toward us to chase us. Kuru means coming, basically coming towards something. So in our direction. Yes. Or, okay. Um, it it can just mean come, uh, but uh, when it's conjugated, it tends to mean toward us. So Annie saying "chotto kite," "chotto kite," "kite kite" means just come a bit, come, come to me, just a little bit. Hi. So te form. Without anything behind it, what do you think it means? Because could anything. Uh, so te form means everything. Yeah. Uh, te form without anything behind it is an order. You're telling someone to do something. So right here, she says, "Brother, come here, come." So in English, if we just say a verb by itself, it's also an order. Like stop. I didn't say you stop. Can you please stop? All I said was stop. And that's order, order. Right. Japanese, same thing. If you just say the verb in te form, it is an order. It's a rude order. I didn't say please or anything. I just said stop. So that is the same idea. So this is Annie. She's her Onichan's little sister. <laughs> She's Jack's little sister. So she can be a little rude to him and just be like, come here. Come. Come here a little bit. She doesn't need to be polite and be like, please, please come here, big brother. So um, so before you read this, this oide has the same meaning as kite. Uh, don't it's like the same thing. It just sometimes one's used rather than the other. But can you hmm. do me a favor and read this? Uh Orite. Do you have any idea what orite can mean? I might have kanji. Ori. Yeah. Sounds familiar. It's to climb, or oh, not climb, but yeah, go upwards. A, that's a good guess. But look at the kanji that orite can have. Go downwards? Yes. Think. 
Orite mm. means to go downward. So orite oide means to go downwards in a kuru time type of way. So toward Jack, basically. Orite oide, which is come down to me. What does abunai mean? It's dangerous. Like, watch out. It's dangerous, you know. Come down. Right now, to me, come down. Orite oide. Um, so now uh, we're looking at more conjugation, and this is going to be negative short form. So, yomu, so negative short form means you add, you, you delete do and you add nai, or you um, delete the u sound, the u sound, and you add anai. For example, Yomu ends with vowel or do and has an u sound, right? Yomu. Right. So u is the leading we added a, ah, so it becomes yo um, manai. Yo manai. Does that kind of make sense? We added a ma sound to the mu and we made an a sound to the mu to make a ma. And nai. Yo manai ma means to not read. Um, so noboru is um, noborimasu. So is this a do verb or an u verb? Mm, noborimasu. Noborimasu. Well, it's not an u verb. It is an u verb. Oh, it is. So u mm. verbs um, are hard to tell because they can look like do verbs. Miru, for example, is a do verb. It becomes mimas. So how do you think mimas and um, o, o, noborimas, uh, noborimas, how are they different, do you think? Mm, 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 mm. So one has a ri and the other does not. Yes. So it's like a ru. So ru doesn't need it. Yes. So if ru is dropped off when you make mas form, that's called a ru verb. But if the U is dropped off and they add in an I, then that makes it into um, an U verb. So it's it's a little like complicated, but since it has no body, this means this right here is actually just an R with an U being added to it. So it looks virtually identical until you start conjugating it into other things. So this is why miru becomes mite without any glottal stop. There's nothing over there. And noboru becomes uh, nobote with a little glottal stop in the middle. Mm. That, that, that thing follows an old conjugations, basically. So noboru, since it's R plus U, how would we make this into negative form? Nobo. Nobo. Mm -mm -mm. It's not noboru. Nobote. Not climbing. So how about kiku? Ends with a oo sound. Kiku. Kiku. So. Kiku. Kiku. Kikanai. Kikanai. Ah. It's an ah uh, added to it. So um, we have also tsukamu, which is tsukamimas. So tsukamanai, which means to not grab. Or osairu. Do you remember osairu? It's been a long time since we've seen this word. Osairu. It's something Jack does to his meganes a lot. Gane. Osairu. Something Jack does often hmm like wipe and clean kind of good idea it actually means to push something um when i did osaidu it showed me like the wrong kanji osaidu uh, uh, also oh no, that's where it's from so it means to push so the negative form is osa osai and nai as osaidu the do is dropped in mas form the osai mas so yeah negative short form is anai is added. 
So now I'm teaching you, this was all taught for the sake of teaching you Z. Z. So Z is added to the end of a verb in order to mean without doing an action. And what happens is that zoo gets added to the negative form of the verb, minus nai, nai. So for example, um, ta be nai, in order to add zoo to this, we delete the nai and we add zoo. Does that make sense? Mm, kind of. Ta be nai, right in front of it. Ta be nai. So ta right here. We have tsukamanai. How would we change this to have zu at the end? Tsukamazu. Yes, exactly. Tsukamazu. Perfect. Because see, we keep the ma, but we delete the nai. So can you do me a favor and read this sentence up here? You know what hataraki means or hataraku? Hataraku. Sounds very familiar. Hataraku. Hataraku. There's, there was an anime with that in its title that was about the body, like the red blood cell and the white blood cell. I don't know if you ever saw that. It was really popular. Oh, that one. Oh, I forgot the name. Uh, hataraku. Hataraku. Hataraku means to work. It also surprisingly, I think, has the same kanji as ugoku. Oh, similar kanji, not the same, which means to move. So moving and you add a human being makes it into work, apparently. Hataraku. To work. So asagohan o tabe ni hatarakimashita. What do you think that means if hataraku means work? So like, I will skip breakfast and I'll go to work. Exactly. Specifically, this is past tense. So it means I skipped breakfast and went to work. So I, I worked without any breakfast today is basically mm. what that's what I'm saying. So without looking, Jack starts climbing. So which of these verbs, looking or climbing, is going to need zoo added to it? Uh, without looking. Exactly. So looking. So where where is looking over here? We have two verbs. Noboru, nata, miru, and mimasu. So it's mimasu. Yes. That gets the zu. Exactly. So how do we add zu to mimasu or miru? Uh, mimasu. That's an interesting guess. Where'd that ma come from? Uh, it was there before. Or do I get rid that of it? That is me mas, which is mas form. It's actually not nai form. So this would actually be me nai. Me nai. Oh, that looks a lot more sense. So when you delete the nai, we become me zu. Is it water? It does. It sounds like water, which is why kanji is so nice. Because if there's a kanji here, you're not going to be confused. Hmm. If you see mizu, me, and you see that, you're like, oh, yes, wakarimasu. But if you saw this, uh, water? It the water? Hmm. That's why kanji saves people. Mizu, me. So now that you have mizu, uh, now I'm going to conjugate climbing. Well, starts climbing. How would you make that from noboru? So... Noboru. Noboru. Form plus something. Sorry, what was that? Your voice cut off. Stem form. Mm. So, no ba. No bo. No bo. I have to add something. Mm. No bo. Mm, 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 mm. No bo z. Does that make sense? I don't think That'd that makes be sense. That'd be without. Um, climbing. We want starts climbing. Do you know what starts was? Uh, hajimete or it hajimeta. Haji, hajimete or hajimeru is how I'll do it. So we need to add hajimeru to noboru. Mas form is noborimasu. 
how do we get stem form from mass form? What do we delete? The mass, so no body. No body. So how do we add them together? No body or hajimeru. That's exactly. Hajimete. Hajimeru. If you added an o, we're no longer conjugating. We're doing no body, and then we have two verbs. But this is like a compound word. So that's why we connected it together in a lesson. So no body mm. hajimeru just gets slammed together to begin to climb. So I'm going to use the eraser to delete these guys. So I have the two verbs for you. So how do you make the sentence? Um, without looking, Jack starts to climb, starts climbing. How would you say that? Uh, mizu ni nobori uh, hajimeru. Perfect. That is exactly what you would say. And that's pretty natural. You could also add daku wa over here or in the middle doesn't really matter you'd only add the jakua if you thought someone might be confused about who you're talking about so mizu ni nobori hajimeru to without looking to begin the climb perfect um so now this is just a little refresher um can you do me a favor and make the sentence jack loves to read books jack loves to read books so Jack to add next. No. Um, Jack wa honnu ga suki. Honnu ga suki. Oh, that's just Jack lo loves books. I guess that's not right. So how do we get Yomu. reading books? How do you say reading books in Japanese? Hon, what's the particle? So hon o yomu. Yes. And then what do we do to the ga? You kind of knew what that goes there. How do we nounify mu? So it's like hon o yomu gaski. Super, super close. You're missing the nounification of mu. Because ga cannot go to a verb. It doesn't work. It only takes like nouns. So right now, the math is not adding up. So what do we need to add to after the mu for this to work? So to change mu, uh, yonde. Actually, rather than changing the, the tense form of this, what we actually do is that we add no. No can um, nounify verbs. So this actually comes mm. no yomu no ga suki. No ga. Mm. No ga. So you actually earlier when you just had hon, you said hon no ga suki. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, you were like hon no ga suki. I'm like, hmm, close, but you forgot the verb. Yep, Jack loves to read books. So no, if there's a verb in, right be, behind it, has tends to have the meaning of turn this verb into a noun. Now I've taught you this because this is something you learned in the past. There's another way nouns can be kind of. A, Verbs can be kind of nounified. You can also add koto. For example, nihongo de hanasu no wa muzukashi, and nihongo de hanasu koto wa muzukashi are both phrases that can be said in Japanese. These are both Japanese, and they both make almost the exact same meaning. But koto tends to be like a more enveloping term. Is kind of how I describe it. So this no right here means kind of almost like right now reading Japanese is hard. You know, it feels more like current. Well, koto feels more like a bigger like, oh, in general, reading Japanese, speaking Japanese is hard. It, it feels more like you're enveloping the whole thing. And it sometimes it's so, for example, if you're confessing your love to somebody, Koto, even though that's a noun, because koto will be added to other things to kind of envelop all them. For example, in an anime, they might be like, um, Sakura no koto. Koto, sorry. Ah, koto ga suki desu. Or something like that. I love Sakura, the human. Um, that'd be everything about Sakura. I love her. Rather than mm. just saying Sakura, I love you. That, that'd be weird in Japanese. They have to say everything about you is beautiful. You have to envelop them with koto, even though it's a noun. So koto is like envelop, whatever comes before it. 
is, is how I think of it. I don't know if that just made it harder for you. <laughs> so uh, basically you could just think about it as nounifying the verb, but it just, it's like a bigger hug. Mm. So with all of that, can you do me a favor and read this? Yes. So before you try anything, do you remember what kite or kiku means? You tend to have a little problem with this word. What does this mean? Kite. So kite is to listen. Yes, kite is a listen. Just so you know, kite means to disappear. So it's important mm. to keep the e sound. Ki, kite or yeah, to listen. So right here we have added a to make ka and zu. Kikazu. What does that mean? Kikazu. So I can't hear. Close. It means without hearing. Mm. How about you koto? You koto. You earlier today. You. It's very similar to yobu. <clears throat> so to mutter about everything. That's actually uh tubuya to uh tubuyaita tubuyaku would be that. Oh, word. then it's to utter. Also put in it, but you mean well to utter. Yes, to to Hi. say something to you. I heard mutter from you. <laughs> so, mutter and utter, super similar words. So to say something, and we've nounified it right with koto. You koto. So what is you koto means? What does that mean? You koto. You. So, to like kind of talk about everything? Yes, everything that Jack says, basically. All the words, anything he could possibly say. You koto mo kikazu, which together means without listening to a single word that Jack was saying. Ani wa nobotte iku. What does nobotte iku mean? Nobotte iku. So she climbed the ladder without listening to anything he had to say. Exactly. Do you know why iku is being used here and not like kudu? Because she's going just away. in general. Jack, yes. Or away. Yes. Yeah. So don don is a, um, it's a lot like how we saw doki doki earlier. It is a sound effect to describe the way in which she was climbing. So this right here is kind of fast, I would say. It's not like but it's a room, 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 room kind of dong, dong, dong. Mm. Like, it's like um, if Slender Man is like walking behind you, speed. So it's not like super slow, but it's not like speedy zombie. <laughs> speed. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's faster than you'd be comfortable with. But if you were running, you would outpace them. <laughs> um, so now we have a couple of words to do. So earlier you asked me, what does deguchi mean? And what does hey. mean? So the kanji in iriguchi, which means entrance, can also be found in the verb haidu. What do you think haidu means? To enter. Yes. Um, there's also iriru, which means to insert something, which also looks very similar. I do, mm. as you can see, also ends with a do. Confusing. But um, it has the same con. Mm, so um, they it kind does. Of uh, so that's why uh, you have to like know the difference. Uh, but we're looking at Heidi, which means for you to um, enter something. Heidi, Heidi Mas. But yeah, Idu would be um, Heidi Mas Imas, I think. Maybe they're both conjugated that way. <laughs> I'm not good at conjugation sometimes. Uh, I do, yes. So they look very similar, but they just mean different things. Uh, but right now we're looking at I do, which just means to enter physically. How about naka? You know what that means? Inside. I exactly. Think. Perfect. And now we have tadori tsuku. Do you know what that means? It's a kind of hard word. Tadori tsuku. Yeah, I don't think I've heard that one before. Tadori tsuku means to arrive somewhere. Mm. So, um, haidu, right. which turns into haidimas. What is its te form, do you think? 
Uh, haite. Yes, perfect. And tadori tsuku, what do you think the must form is? My hint, remember, is imas. Uh, imas, so tadori imas. It's actually tadori tsuki mas. Oh, where'd the key come from? Well, oh, right here. Oh, the ku became a key. Yep, the ku, the u got dropped because um, with u verbs, u normally goes somewhere. It's thrown away. While with ru verbs, ru gets thrown away. That's how they're um, defined as the two different verbs. So tadori tsuku doesn't end with a ru, ends with an u. So u gets thrown away and we're adding a little e to it. Kikiki. So tadori tsukimas to arrive. So now we have this guy to read. Ah, uh, the tree house ni ah tadori tsuki ah su surori to suri to nakamo nakamo hai de shitimas shitimas shimasta shimatta shimatta shimatta. Do you know what shimatta meant? It's like yeah, but. Yeah, but like, exactly. <laughs> How about yagatte? Yagatte. That's new. Yes, it is probably new. Yagatte yagatte. means like um kind of soon. It's like a before long kind of. So yagatte ani wa chihouse ni tadori tsuki. What does that mean? Tadori tsuki toward the tree. Arrived at the treehouse. We arrived at the treehouse. So what you're seeing right here is a different way and can work in Japanese. You can do stem form and do like comma. <laughs> and this can be used uh, it, to make an and. Uh, with this, they also had sururito, which means um, smoothly. So the way, so sururi is a, like a sound effect. The way in which he haite was in a sururito kind of way. So, sururito, naka mo haite shimatta. So, what does naka mo haite mean? So, entered inside. Yes, also. So, not only did she arrive at the treehouse, but she, in, she went inside. And how did Jack feel about this? Shimatta. So, he wasn't very happy about it. He was not. She completely entered the treehouse and he's like, shitaki mushroom. I told her to come down. Ah, shimatta. I couldn't have convinced her to come down. And that's where we're going to pause for today. <laughs> Hi. So, stop the video.